A few months ago, I received an email from System76, the makers of Pop! OS, and they told me they had a brand new open source, highly configurable keyboard coming out and they wanted us to check it out and they said, hey, we'll send you one. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna take a look at their new keyboard called the System76 Launch. It's mechanical, it's got hot swap switches, and it's got a few other tricks up its sleeve as well. So let's take a look. All right, let's kick this off by taking a bit of a look at what you get in the box. You get the keyboard itself, you get a bar that attaches to the bottom of the keyboard with a magnet to change the angle of the keyboard. You get a switch and keycap puller, as well as additional keycaps if you're going to be changing the layers and the layout of this launch keyboard. I'll come back to that shortly. There's also a USB type A to type C cable and a USB type C to type C cable included as well. The overall design and construction is really solid. The keyboard itself weighs around 948 grams as measured without the feet attached. It's 160 millimeters deep, 309 millimeters long, and around 33 millimeters high. It's a very unique keyboard. System76 is calling this keyboard a 10 kilos or a TKL, but it's somewhere between a 75% and an 80% layout. The keyboard feels quite dense when you pick it up, and I think this is one of the heaviest keyboards that we've ever used. The design is very Commodore 64 slash Amiga-esque and kind of that generation inspired, although this might not be everyone's cup of tea though. I like it, it matches System76's design language with both Pop! OS and their desktop PCs as well, so I can see why they went this path with it. The chassis features System76's open source aluminium milled chassis and there's no plastic in sight. The top plate is also aluminium as well. There's zero deck flex and the schematics for this keyboard can be downloaded and modified if you wanted to make your own keyboard based on the launch. So, Already, that's pretty cool. The launch has per-key RGB lighting and all of the lighting can be controlled in System76 keyboard configurator software. The software is relatively easy to use and allows for lighting control and to configure layers, to remap keys, as the firmware of this keyboard is based on the QMK firmware. The System76 keyboard configurator is also available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Of course, the software is gonna be for Linux as well. It's System76 but you can technically compile it for any platform you like because the software is also open source. The big thing for me though is that this thing supports Linux and you guys may or may not know this, but I daily drive Ubuntu as my main distro and OS and having full software control in an OS of my choice really makes this more appealing to users like me, someone who doesn't primarily use Windows. The keycaps on this are PBT and the font on each key is decent. The font used is the same font that they use in Pop! OS as well, and they use the XDA profile if you're wanting to swap out keycaps. These keycaps in particular feel quite good to type on and have a decent amount of grip. I noticed that I would mistype things on this keyboard quite a bit because of the typing angle, so the angle of the keyboard is not what I'm used to, but that's probably down to the fact that I'm used to using a completely different deck, so you know. It is what it is, and I found that when I did get used to typing on it, my typing speed on the launch was about normal. The form factor of the keyboard is actually pretty nice. It is unique, it's not exactly the same as what you're expecting, and to be honest, I didn't find myself missing the numpad as much as I thought I would, and the inclusion of a full function key row makes this more attractive to me personally. A lot of these smaller keyboards don't have that, but this one does. You can also use layers on this keyboard, so, you know, if it doesn't have the numpad layer, you can create a new layer and it makes it more user friendly. I guess that's why these type of keyboards exist. And the layers can be accessed by pressing the function key. The fact each key on this can be remapped is also a pretty nice thing too. The split space bar takes a little bit of getting used to. It is odd to begin with. And I found myself using the right space bar more and you can actually remap all the keys anyway. So if you're only using one space bar, you can remap the other one to do something else. The launch uses KL box switches, and when you purchase it from System76's website, you can choose from either the box jade switches or the box royal purples. And as configured in the one that I've got here, I've got the box royal purples. 
Now these are a tactile switch with a total travel distance of around 3.6 millimeters with an operating force of around 75 grams. And they're a lot heavier than I'm used to, but they do feel really nice to type on given they are tactile. Now it may not look like it, just taking a quick glance at these switches if you've never used them, but they do actually use an MX stem. So you can use any custom keycaps that you like on it too, but let's hear how the launch sounds. It's got a few other tricks up its sleeve too. The deck is also hot swappable, which means that you've got a lot of switch options if that's the path you want it to go down. Switches aren't really expensive, so it might be something you want to do. The launch is compatible with almost all MX style three and five pin mechanical switches. That means you could use Otomu switches, Gateron or Cherry switches. In fact, I tested a set of cherry pinks in this and it works just fine. I think those who are into custom keyboards and all that don't need me to tell them about this stuff and how it all works. You guys already know. The deck itself is quite interesting too. The PCB design is also open source. So if you really wanted to, you could mill your own case and send the schematics to someone like PCBWay and truly build your own custom keyboard from scratch. Not only that, on the back side of the deck, there's also a scent mounted USB type C connector. So you use that one to connect it to your computer of choice, as well as two USB type A ports and two USB type C ports to connect stuff into. So this is kind of nice to have. It's got like this high speed USB hub built in. So you can plug your storage into it. You can, if you've got like a wireless mouse, you can plug that into it. This might not be for everyone, but personally this right here, like having this modularity, is really useful to me. And that's like why I have a USB hub built into my desk because my regular keyboard doesn't have it. Now, I want to talk about my experiences using this type of keyboard for my purposes because some of you guys out there might look for the same things that I do in keyboards. From a content creation standpoint, which is my primary use case, the launch is okay. The numpad is something that I use a lot. And with this type of keyboard, you're not really buying it to have a numpad but you can create a new layer for the numpad if you really need it anyway. So that's one of the bonuses of using this firmware that this keyboard does. For gaming, this keyboard is <laughs> a bit strange to get used to at first because of the angle of the keyboard, even when you're using that angle bar, it is it just feels really flat. And I suspect this is more to do with me not being used to this form factor and I mean, even when you adjust that angle, it just feels really flat. It's not really a deal breaker once you get used to it, but you know, it's just something to be aware of. So what don't I like about the launch? As mentioned, the lack of the additional adjustment angle is a bit, it's, it's, it's tough to get used to. You can get used to it. However, that's easily fixed because you could technically mill or 3D print your own angle bar based on the provided schematics. Like you could just make it taller. The other thing I found was weird is that it's got this per key RGB lighting. However, the keycaps have little to no transparency and the legend is also not transparent. You can see the lighting around the keys and it's got a bit of a nice effect, but it is a little bit strange. I guess this is mainly to do with people who are going to be putting their own keycaps and customizing it a bit. It's nice that it's included. The other issue I found was with the key sockets themselves. They are way tighter than any other custom keyboard I've ever used. It's not really a big deal if you're not planning on swapping this or customizing, but I thought it was worth mentioning if you were looking at this to change the switches. For the keyboard enthusiasts, this is probably not the keyboard for you. This is a really solution based keyboard for people who want a keyboard they can fully control in any operating system they choose. And that's really the point of the launch. It's all about choosing and choice, right? 
Not only that, System76 has designed the layout and the default key mapping to integrate tightly with Pop! OS. As I mentioned, you've also got choice, so it's not just about Pop! OS. With this layout and mapping, you can basically use Pop! OS or any Linux distro without touching your mouse. Me personally, I'm a heavy non-mouse user when I'm using any Linux distro, and the launch made that experience feel... It made it feel familiar, if that makes sense. It just feels like I'm communicating with the computer. But here's the thing, the price, okay? All right, now, the price for the System76 launch at the time of filming this video starts at 285 US dollars. You can also elect to have a limited parts and labor warranty as well. The lead time for these keyboards is a few months at present because of the handmade nature of these and they can only be directly purchased from System76. So it does add to that lead time. And I know what you're thinking already, 285 US dollars is a lot of money for a keyboard, but let me explain this a bit, right? The keyboard itself is made in the USA in a very bespoke manner. So, you know, the labor cost already is, is higher. They're also hand assembled and they're packed and they're tested. Not only that, System76's main product is a free Linux distribution, right? It's one of the best and most polished distros ever made. And you can check out our Pop! OS content over on Kernel Control and have a look for yourself. $285 for a keyboard that helps support a very small team of really smart people making super high quality products is okay by me. I don't see the problem with the price here. You gotta look at it as more of an investment in the company rather than you just buying a keyboard. I'm not trying to sound like a shill or anything like that, but that's how I see it. It's a very tight and small team. So, you know, things cost money. Now, it's really hard for me to admit something like this, but this keyboard is properly good. The USB hub alone for someone like me is a massive bonus. The, the price is high, but you're getting a truly high quality bit of gear and if I'm being honest, it's probably the most well-built keyboard I've ever used. The design is not everyone's cup of tea, but the layout, once you get used to it, is actually pretty enjoyable to use. Now, let us know in the comments what you think about the System76 launch. You guys already know how I feel about it. This thing is a properly good keyboard. Now, I know not everyone's gonna like this design and this color scheme, but I mean, that's the bonus of it using these keycaps and whatnot. You can just change it yourself and make it look like anything you like. But the underlying keyboard, man, this thing is just built like it, it, it's, it's built really well. So props to System76 for their first keyboard. I think you've done a really good job. And if you like this video, you know what to do, like and subscribe. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. I feel like I don't need to exercise anymore at the gym. This thing is almost a kilo heavy, which is very heavy for a keyboard. And again, I'm gonna say it, System76, I think you've done a really good job on this keyboard. The layout is unique. The double space bar takes a bit of getting used to, but it is very cool that you can remap everything. And I know the keyboard enthusiasts are already gonna say, oh, you could already do that with QMK firmware keyboards before, but this is hyper accessible with the way System76 integrates the software with it. It makes it really easy to use and it feels like a complete package. Thanks for watching.